Hey everybody, Max Monty1516 here, back again with the sixth installment of Countdown to Christmas Reviews. Today, we'll be looking at the two different versions I have of the Flying Scotsman. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Here I have the first rendition of the Flying Scotsman, this model specifically being released from 1999 up until discontinuation in 2002. So, um, with a more up-close look, as you can see, the Flying Scotsman has a very unique build. Uh, obviously, looking at it from the top, he has a very slim boiler, almost looking like Henry, actually. And, of course, his face is actually kind of an oval shape. It doesn't go all the way uh, onto a smoke box there. But I think this face is fantastic. That, like, looks perfectly like the illustration it's based off of. Even though um, it is an illustration accurate in inaccuracy. Because the illustration they based this off of was actually Henry winking in the scene. And not Flying Scotsman. So, just something interesting to note. But either way, it does look pretty cool. And it's a very unique looking face too, so I can't complain. Of course, uh, as you can see here, he has very minimal detail. He has the nameplate, which is up on the boiler. And he has cab lining, as well as what's meant to be a British Railways logo. So, um, with the nameplate itself, obviously, for room for the big wheels, they had to get rid of the running board. And, no sp and he has no splashers because of that. So the nameplate isn't on a splasher, and instead it's just up on the boiler. It's very strange looking, and to be honest, I'm not a fan of that, but they couldn't really have done it any other way, so I can excuse that. What I don't understand is they just had this uh, circle, this like red circle with yellow filling in it for no reason. Like, if they can give Boko a British Railways logo that looks nearly perfect, then... They can just do the same thing on Scotsman. I don't know. I never understood that. So, um, of course, this Scotsman has a few inaccuracies. Like, of course, the, the firebox is literally resting on nothing. And, um, obviously the British Railway logo, like I talked about earlier. But honestly, looking aside from its flaws, this model is so iconic. And honestly, like, if you just step back and look at him, he looks really cool. Just in general. Flying Scotsman's one of the coolest engines out there. I mean, especially... This wooden railway model really does them justice. Quickly looking at the tenders here, as you can see, they are green on the sides, but black on the back and front and the top there. This is the coal tender. Uh, of course, no name on it because mine's from 1999. And as you can see there, he has the LNER on one tender and the 4472 on his water tender. I believe this indention is meant to be a water tank or like where he would fill up with water. I, that's my own guess, actually. Not entirely sure, but this is the water tender. So yeah, um, of course his number's on there, just like so. And uh, yeah, so these are actually very interesting because they're the longest tenders in any range. They are actually as long as Thomas, funny enough. So that's something interesting to note. I'm glad they actually went out and did that instead of making the tenders normal size like Gordon's or James's. Because, I mean, that just makes this model look even cooler. And I really like how they actually gave the tenders... Um, six wheels instead of just like four so yeah and then more props to them for that so overall this flying scotsman is undoubtedly iconic and while it is pretty inaccurate for the most part i still can't help but enjoy it now things really get interesting when we look at the 2013 edition of the flying scotsman now this is quite a strange item and mainly for the reason it was produced this was actually made under the first year that Mattel uh, got the rights to the wooden railway to make the wooden railway models and they brought back Flying Scotsman and a bunch of other characters like they brought back D199, Fergus, they brought back Lady and Coldy and Bertram in following years and I really believe they did this for just for like the older collectors because back in the day and especially nowadays the, this model of Flying Scotsman the old one right here yeah this thing costs a pretty penny and um yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that they decided to re-release the Flying Scotsman because he wasn't as expensive for a while because this was brand new. But of course, this one's gone up in price too since it was a limited edition and it was discontinued by the end of 2013. So, uh, let's take a closer look. Now, uh, this Scotsman already, you'll notice some striking differences. First of all, stripes, and they're yellow, and I really, I, I think they look really cool. The next difference here you'll see is the dome, which is actually properly shaped versus the uh, circle one you can see here on the old model. 
Another thing that's different is the British Railways logo. While it's not super accurate, it actually does say Mainland Railway, and it's better than just a circle and a dot. So, um, yeah, again, props to Mattel for this. Another thing I really like is not only does he have cylinder detailing up here, but he also has splashers now. Can't really see them because they're hidden by the wheels, but if you do um, push these wheels down, you can see that, yeah, indeed, there are splashers. And there's splasher detailing, which is really cool, actually. I like that. Another difference is that the face is actually circular now. But, uh, honestly, it stays pretty consistent. I mean, look at that. They, they did a fantastic job re replicating the old face. So, call me crazy, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me here, but I actually prefer this model of the Flying Scotsman. He even has, like, a proper running board here now that the, fire, the firebox is actually sitting on something instead of just hanging off onto the wheels. So, another thing I really, really enjoy about that model. Overall, I think this one just looks super cool in general. Moving on to the tenders, I also think the tenders are better, mainly for one reason, and that being the lettering on the sides is actually a lot more clear and crisp, and they have red lining around them like they should. So that is one thing I actually really enjoy. Of course, here you can see uh, molded coal up here, and again, uh, it's black on the front and back. And of course, now we can see Flying Scotsman's tender. And if we look at this one here, it actually says water tanker. It's not a tanker exactly, but it is cool that they did that. I'm, I'm glad they um, they specified that on the names. So, of course, as you can see, the 4472 is on the tender just like this. And it has the same function. It's pretty much the same item as this. Yeah, there, there's almost, there's virtually no difference aside from the printing on the sides. But, yeah, overall, I do think that, these, that uh, the detailing on this Flying Scotsman model in particular is very impressive. And, honestly, it's one of my favorite Mattel Wooden Railway models. So, yeah, um, I guess I'll finish off here. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Max Monty 1516, signing out.